friends, Jerry Rosa here at the Rosa String Works Workshop. It's time to get into the part three of this guitar build. We've got to fit the tops to the sides. Ordinarily, that's pretty easy to do, but this one's a little more complicated, mainly because I made it more complicated, I guess. And how did I make it more complicated? Well, you know me. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> I uh, have an armrest built into this, so we have to figure out how to make the top fit to that. We also have to cut the braces down to fit inside the kerfing. I, a lot of folks just cut the kerfing out and let the braces go up inside there. I do it the other way. I prefer to shorten the braces, have the sides sitting flat all the way around, and um, have the kerf flat all the way around. That's the way I like to do it. It works for me. It sounds really good that way. I tend to believe that it actually makes the top a hair more flexible. Uh, and I think that's mainly because I'm shortening the, the braces just a little bit. Regardless whether that's true or whether it's not, that's the way I do it. This is a little tricky operation, so I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, here's the armrest. I first wanted to test to see if, if this curve was consistent with a compass. And I did that and I, I put it on here and I traced it like this and it traces perfectly. So that's that works really good. So then I decided to back it up and get this point and this point and back, but back it up and have it draw across from this point to this point and that would cut across the circle then. So anyway, that's what I'm doing and I'm just trying to find where that point is again. I have taken it all apart. I had it just right, and now I'm going to have to do trial and error, but this will show you what I'm doing. I, uh, I just I get this point right here, then I test this point over here. Wow, I think I got really close the first try. So I'm just going to move it back and over a little. Now we're at that point, and we're at that point. So we're right on the points. So now I'm just going to go ahead and draw the line. And that did a real nice job. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, again, it all depends on how the light is. If you can even see the line or not. Turn it up, maybe that'll show it better. But again, it's really hard to see. There's the lights on it a little better. But you can see how that cut across from this point to this point and cut across the circle. Now that's what you need to do. And I have to route out inside this line so the, uh, that way the top will connect from this point here all the way around to this point here. And yet the armrest will be showing. So we have to route down to the depth of this. Th this is actually sitting up about, oh, you know, a hundred thousandths of an inch, a couple millimeters taller than this, two and a half millimeters. So we got to route this area out and that's what we're going to do now. Now that's not that easy to do, but maybe I can do that mechanically with the same principle. I'm going to see if I can rig up something. Well, you can see my setup. <clears throat> I put my rosette routing attachment on here that I made, but I didn't have a stick long enough, so I just made one out of wood because this is a temporary deal. But it's plenty good for this, and I think it's going to work. I've been tracing the uh, line here uh, dry, and it traces it really well. So I'm ready to turn it on and see what happens. Well, I would say if that wasn't perfect, it was real close to it. So I'm happy with that. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it all in. And, and this kind of keeps everything flat. It's a little easier routing this way than it would be freehand. So I'm just going to leave it on there and try to take out most of it with, with it still attached to this. Don't know if that's gonna work, but I think it will. So I'm just gonna move it in about a blade's width, a cutter's width, whatever you wanna call it. And we'll do that again until we get her cut out of there. Hopefully you can see how well that turned out. It just turned out beautiful. It, it just, it brings this line right on around comes right out to that line. So it should work really well. <clears throat> and I think we've still got enough meat here to put the top on here and put a little piece of binding in there. In fact, we don't have to cut all the way through the top on the binding that goes through here, uh, just to give the top a little bit more strength. 
Um, and then we've got to route all this underneath here out and bevel it out to, to lighten it up. So there's a lot of work yet. this armrest down with this sander. I've got 80 grit paper on there and that's just not going to do it. I'll look and see if I have anything that's rougher. I'm not sure I do. Well that worked better. I put a new new belt on there but uh, it's still going to take a lot of carving to get it down. You can see I put a little bevel on there. So, I'll try something else. That actually cuts it down much faster, but uh, it's kicking up so much dust. Even the dust mask, it's getting in my eyes the whole bit. You know, it's, I think I'm gonna have to come up with a better dust collecting thing here before I finish this. you up a little bit <laughs> wearing all that stuff on your face but it's better than breathing it all down and listen and I also had earplugs in too um, better than all the damage that can happen I guess and that looks pretty darn good I I'm pretty pleased with that you can kind of see how it's all beveled now down to the sides you know I can always do a little more by hand you know I've got it kind of beveled into these edges here too it looks pretty darn nice I you know I'll clean it up a little bit more but overall I think we're just about done with that off camera I took the tooth blade on the finger plane and I went through this whole thing really well and clean you know flattened it out basically that's what that does and now I'm going through and cleaning up the little tooth marks with the uh, exacto knife. I'm just using the round blade to, as a scraper and just cleaning up the, making it real smooth. And then I'll just do a final quick hand sanding and then I think we're done. Yeah, that's nice now. You, it really feels just like one curve. And I'll now sand it with a little 220 and call it good. as good as it needs to be. Looks real nice. Nice and smooth. Should have good support there. Everything should be fine. I've been threatening to cut up an inner tube for uh, a long piece of rubber like that for a very long time and finally I just did it. You know, it's just rough cut, it's nothing fancy, but uh, I just kept cutting it in a spiral around the inner tube and just cut a very long piece, probably 20 feet long. And then I just started wrapping it on here. And the advantage of the rubber is that you can, it's got enough flex that I can move the top around, get it just where I want it, and yet it'll hold it in place. And as you saw, I cut out the back of this mold and the reason I wanted to do that this way was I could turn it over now, down on its face lightly like that. 
and I can take a pencil now and score all the <laughs> braces and everything where they're touching and that way I can you know I can go in there I can take it apart and then cut all the braces back to where they need to be it's gonna work really good I think looks real symmetrical even in here on the braces it's looking real fine really makes it a lot handier uh, the way I'm using it this way than what I've done in the past I'm gonna go ahead and draw around the blo blocks too so use that as kind of my reference as how I'm lining it up the uh, trickiest part of all of it is trying to figure out how to cut out for that armrest and I still haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but I think I'll start by just getting the braces cleaned up and see how that goes first. Perhaps you can see the lines that are around here. Um, so now I can just go and cut those lines with an X-Acto knife. And then I can just trim away the brace back to that spot. My idea is to carve it away without really carving into the top at all. And actually I'm leaving a glue line there as the way I'm carving it. You can actually see the glue on the top of the guitar there. decide how to f make that line around here and transfer that to this top so I took a piece of carbon paper laid it on here you know got the top situated and then I just rubbed it rubbed it rubbed it rubbed it like that and it left a very light impression and so I've traced that impression with a pencil now I'm just going to go to the sander and sand off some of that I'm going to leave the line just to be safe I'm going to leave quite a bit of it, you know, and do it a little bit at a time and see how it's looking. But I think, I think it's going to work. I got the top fitting up really well. As a matter of fact, uh, even better than I expected. If I line up the center marks, the, everything comes out perfect. Um, the crack here is minimal. It's, there is a little bit of a crack there, but it's very minimal and it doesn't really matter because there'll be a binding strip going in between there. The problem that I still have is that the kerf inside of here was high. I've already started cutting it down with this little finger plane, but yet the shelf here is still going to be high too, so I'm going to have to cut this shelf down a little bit more. Alright, I'm going to have to do something here. I'm not sure how I'm going to cut this down hate to do it with a router, but I may have to. I don't know. I'm using my tooth blade in my plane. That gets me, that does a pretty good job, but it leaves about a oh, eighth inch in here that I can't get to. And I think I can do that with a little small chisel. So we'll just do that. here and then it starts to get a little high so we must still be a little high on this area I think that's going to do it I'm going to do some cleanup here and then we're about ready to glue this on I believe 
I have spent quite a bit of time off camera, you know, cleaning up these edges, leveling it real good. I've got a long flat sanding block and, you know, going at different angles to try to make sure everything's in the same plane. So I've done all that. I believe it's about as good as it's going to get. So I think we're ready to glue the top on. Always tweaking it, you know. I see a little spot right here that maybe I could get a little bit tighter fit if I get rid of it. I should have done the inner tube thing a long time ago. I've always thought I was going to do that and I just never did get around to it. Friends, while that top is drying, I'll interrupt this video to show you this. Well, you've heard me say I'm going to do that when I get around to it. Now I have one. <laughs> This came from my buddy Bullhorn. We jammed with him down there at Mountain View, and I believe he was the one that also found these uh, wonderful razor blades. They're the old stock razor blades, the ones that are thicker, and they're stiffer, and they work much better. So thank you, Bo. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, that's what that is. That's, that's a round to it. So I have no more excuses. It sure is. It is better. There's no question about it. Uh, I like the way it grips. It, it grips different than the string does. The string holds it down, don't get me wrong, but the uh, inner tube doesn't seem to damage the sides for one thing. It, let, it gives you a little bit of flex where you can still move things under it too, which is nice. does it I might try to get a big clamp right here and, and put something right here maybe and you know just to hold that down and and maybe run another bead right here because I didn't get that real good I got another piece of rubber that I cut out of that same inner tube and I can run that off of this piece here it's pretty nice Feels solid everywhere. I think it's going to be fine. Like I said, I think I will get something and clamp this just for safety's sake. Put a piece of leather on there and then I put a little board on top of that and just squeezed it down. That actually did create some squeeze out so I'm glad I did that. So I think that was a good idea. I think it all looks fine. We'll just give that overnight to Rest up and we'll be ready to move on. Thought you might get a kick out of this. If this doesn't sound like a drum, I don't know what does. Can you hear that? Listen to that sustain even crazy. That is awesome. And it's pretty even all around too. Wow, it's going to be killer. something new. I've always wanted to do my own, I don't know what you call them, inlay strips that go down, divide the back up into a three-piece back. I'd like to make my own strips. And anyway, I've got this piece of uh, Osage Orange and it's been drying for a long time. And to be honest, it's probably not too much 
value for anything else because of the crookedness and you know it's got a few flaws in it but it should be perfect if I cut it up into little tiny pieces to make inlay strips with so the first thing I want to do is get a straight edge on it and we're going to just rough that out on the bandsaw here well that's relatively straight I'm just about as straight as a dog's hind leg I guess so uh, we're, that's why we have a joiner so we can flatten that edge The widest strip I can get out of this that would be whole would be one and three quarters inches. So that's what we're going for. This has been rough sawn, so it's, it's uh, wavy. And so I think what I'll do now is get it all to one standard thickness. where I'm going with this yet but at least we have a real pretty yellow piece of wood <laughs> we'll see where it takes us I think this cherry will offer a nice contrast to the yellow and yet still be different enough from the paduk so that it won't you know blend in I want it to stand out a little bit um, the yellow is a little bit harsh at the moment, but I, you know, if we have to, we might, you know, stain it a little bit or something. But I, I don't plan to use any stains on the guitar at this time. I, you know, so I'm hoping we can make it work like it is. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Once again, I forgot to push the camera twice, so I'm gluing these two. I put glue on both sides of this. I used this roller and really rolled it out real well. And anyway, there's glue in between those two pieces of wood. And I'm going to clamp it to the edge of my steel table here on my table saw and put this over the top of it to keep it really pressed flat. <laughs> We'll let that set overnight and see about cutting some decorative strips tomorrow. Got to go clean this now. Now I don't know if you can see this, but there's my first test. I just took some strips of wood and glued them together, and then I just sawed them at 45 angles. This is just a test. It's not an end product, but you can see the herringbone pattern in there, I believe. And there's different ways to do it. You can match the patterns up from one side to the other, or you can stagger them like I did there. They, they're falling apart. They're not standing up because there's a burr on the bottom edge or something, but maybe you can see a little bit of this pattern there. So you, could, you can make the patterns match from one side to the other or stagger them. Never fails. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm just playing with different ideas. Miter gauge set at a 45. I have my stop over here so that they'll only be so long. And, you know, and I also have this backer board on here so that it won't tear out on the back side. And now we're just going to see if this whole theory works. <laughs> Let's see what's going on because it doesn't look exactly right. One, the first one may not have been any good. I think the second two are okay. See, that's the way it's supposed to look. It's, I don't know if that's focusing or not, but it's supposed to look like that, and that looks good to me. So.
that's the result of all that cutting. It was a long, slow process. Should have had a new blade on there because that blade was pretty dull and it was burning the pieces as it was cutting them. But I don't think that's an issue. I don't think that's a problem. You can see this would have been kind of, this is kind of how I want them to go together, I think. Let me just show you here. Have to have to get them turned the right way. So it would be like that. It makes kind of an arrow pattern. I'll just be real blunt and honest and tell you I've never done this before. This is probably, uh, you know, about the most awkward way you could do this. This is probably like putting socks on a rooster or something. That's about how awkward this is. But on the other hand, I can't think of any other way to really do it that would make any better sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna super glue the first one down. I've got a line on here to try to get it square. And I figure that first one just CA glue it down like that. Now there's a lip under there. If I come from this other end, I can push these, I'm, my theory is I can push them up tight and it'll lock in under this one. I'm just gonna do that, work my way back this way with them. The rest of them I'm going to use regular wood glue, I believe, because I think in the long run that'll be stronger. This one is just there to hold it as a starting point. I won't know till I get about here whether or not it's working or not. <laughs> well, the first one's glued in there. Feels real solid. Here we go. I got my tight bond in this dish. I thought I'd just paint it in here and see if that works. I may pause and try to come up with a clamp deal idea, which I think would be the best. Well, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try that as I get my clamp temporarily. Seems to be going together real tight this way. I don't know. Time will tell. Stop the video at this point and show you what it looks like when I get this first row done. Of course I have to do it again for this other row so this is a slow painstaking process. It's been set in about 30 minutes which isn't long enough but it's not it's long enough to take it out of out of the fixture here. Turned out pretty decent. You know if you look at the edge there that's what we're going for. And I'm going to look at the edge and make sure I didn't screw it up anywhere. I think I got the pattern the same all the way. What I have to do now is figure out how to do the exact same thing going the other way. And I'll have to start at this end so that I can do the same process going, but it'll go backwards this time. But that should work. That's, that's exactly what I need right there. So basically I need it glued down just like that. I got to start at this end and work that way this time. And I don't guess I have to. I could turn it around now that I've got it the way I like it. I actually like working this direction better, so I'll just turn it around like that and work this direction. So we should still be good. I'll keep that in the same orientation, so we should be fine. What I want to do first is draw my little square line to get started with. So, like my father before me. The, the saw left a little fuzz on the edges, and so I'm just going to take a few minutes and knock all the fuzz off of these. That makes them easier to go together and more accurate, too, I'm sure. Well, I'm all set up here and starting on my second row. <clears throat> the main thing I'm doing at this point is just making sure I keep it good and square as I get it started. You don't want to start it crooked, that's for sure. Now that I've got a few glued down, I'll take the wax paper, put it over the top of this. 
take the little short board first because I can use it for a ways before I have to get into the big board. <clears throat> and then just stick her to the table. And again, even, even like that, I can check for square. But my father said, son, you should move away. He said, farm life is dying. Son, please don't stay. I moved to the city. And I tried to fit in. You can see the strips have dried overnight. They're curled up, which I kind of wish wouldn't have happened. So when I put them together, that's, yeah, I got to force them back together. It's not that big a deal. But there's slight roughness to this. So I'm going to run them through here to size them and get them both exactly the same size before I clamp them together. I thought of my father, how the crops would get in. I could hear him say, son, you should move away. He said, farm life is dying. Well, that's, <clears throat> I guess, as good as it's going to get. I'm going to glue it together and see how it turns out. Well, it's time to saw this into strips. I've got this set at 139 thousandths, right at 140 thousandths, I guess. And I'm going to, that should be more than thick enough. My backs shouldn't be much over a hundred thousandths. That'll give me a little room to clean it up. And so we're, we're going to saw this into strips and see what we end up with. Here we go. Son, please don't stay. pleased with that. That's my first time ever doing it and they turned out pretty darn good. Uh, I got seven real good pieces and the eighth piece is pretty good. I mean it's it got chopped up a little bit on the end for some reason and a little bit on this end but it, you know it's still good enough. I can use this for patching in making pieces longer or whatever and then this last little bitty thin strip it even could be used on a thin inlay, but I won't use it on a guitar, but you never know. I might use it on something else decorative down the road. That really turned out nice. I couldn't be much more pleased with that. You'll have to stay tuned to see what I do with it. Blah, blah.